Hello, everyone. Let me get us set up. About to welcome the lovely Danielle Wicks. Hi, guys. Hi, Sam. Hi, Danielle. Happy Friday to everyone. Um, it is, we've got us really a treat in store today. But first, how are you doing today, Danielle? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm good. It's really nice, like calm Friday. I didn't feel like doing my hair today. So I'm just relaxing. All good. You know, oh, I love my hat days. I just, just there's some days people are like, Sam, you're hiding your curls. I'm like, folks, I don't have curls if I don't do, if I don't spend time doing my hair. I have a, a buff. <laughs> I, I go with braid every day and it's usually earlier in the day, it's still wet and then it gets dry as the day. <laughs> that's so smart because then it looks good all day long. That's very smart. Yeah. See, that, that's no matter what you do all day long. Like, because what you go running and like, that's 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 smart. I see I see what you're doing there. Yep. Uh, so today we have a great kit class, and we're trying it out a little differently, where we're launching the kit today, and doing class today as well. Which Daniel made the point that like it's actually kind of nice for this one because it's a little bit of like a next, probably our next step up of technique that we've done for seed beating. Would you tell us a little bit yeah. about the technique we're doing today? Yeah, yeah, it's considered a beginner technique, but I think it's on the hairy edge of being intermediate. Mm -hmm. And so I do think it's really awesome. People can see it first. And, and there are, um, there's also earrings that are with this that will inspire you to still use the kit in other ways. If you feel like the herringbone is just like, ah, no, but herringbone stitch is like, if you've never done flat herringbone, you might want to do that first before trying the round stitch. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, let me add your overhead. I've got a bunch of content out there on that. Oh, yeah. So here's the halloween -y version. And you'll recognize these from the lantern necklace class that we did. Let's see. There we go. And so that's kind of your idea. If someone wants a slightly easier option, they could just do that technique. Yeah. And this is the one we did you know, a couple weeks ago that is a super beginner friendly. The caps fit really nicely. There's no tension that you have to worry about. Like um, in bead weaving, the tension for the thread becomes kind of important on some kinds of stitches. Herringbone's one of them, especially when you're trying to get it to fit the cap because you want it to slide on and off, but be very snug. And so I actually start and end the stitch on the cap. Gotcha. If someone sure was guys. doing the earrings, um, what, do they need to make any adjustments based on the class from two weeks ago? Yeah, and I included that in the new PDF for this one because these are a different size bead. So the pattern is different, but the cool thing is the math is, it has some cool symmetry to it. So it's, you start by stringing 14 and then each row has seven beads. You make a total of 14 rows. Nice, so it's very, so it's very, very similar to yeah. the, the lantern class. And then mm -hmm. if someone- And the pattern's in the PDF for it. Gotcha, so the, I really like the idea. So if, the, if Herringborn feels like a little bit too much to tackle, you could just do like almost a lantern version necklace of this as well. Cause we, we provide six caps per kit. Um, I should also yeah. add, we the first kit we announced was with a black plate. So that's what Danielle has here, has these really cool custom joy, we start with these custom joy caps, that those are the glue on caps that Danielle has there. And then we designed a whole kit around it. So it's these beautiful like orange, harlequin, amazing beads that are two tone. Mm -hmm. And then you get a pair of bats, you get a pair of pumpkins as well if you don't want to do super Halloween theme. Um, you also get like a nice little section of orange check glass from the shop as well as completely tear cast finding. So like you're getting really high quality chain, uh, niobium ear wires, which are hypoallergenic, um, jump rings, head pins, eye pins, like you're getting it all. You just need to bring wildfire and needles and glue basically to do this kit. So this is one of our first all-inclusive kits at the shop. Uh, the black kit had a lot of interest and has probably a bigger wait list than we're gonna be able to fulfill. So if you have one in your cart, I would go ahead and pay for it now that, because we, if you were on the wait list, it, you might now have it in your cart. We then made a second version in copper. So that has the copper joy caps and copper findings and then the same orange beads because it still looks so beautiful with the copper. Um, we decided to play with the charms. You get a pair of hummingbird charms like Danielle has there. 
and you get a pair of some leaves that um, I realized I should add a photo of those to the listing. But you get kind of two different types of charms in the copper kit. As, as of, I believe we have a few copper kits left. If you'd like to snag one, oh, I usually have my phone nearby, but go to the Sam Speed Shop app. And at the very top, you'll see both kits. You can join the wait list if they're sold out. I there should be some copper kits left that you can go ahead and purchase. Um, it's probably unlikely that we're going to be able to make more of the black kits at this point because we did make those findings custom. Oh my god! The copper is really pretty. I can show it with the copper. There's a really nice picture on the site, but I haven't done any of my gluing yet for these sets. So you can see how they're made and basically how to make them into the final pieces of jewelry that you got. But so taking away the, the black ox here. And once you glue these, they're permanent. Um, but I have not glued mine yet. So here's the earring with the little charm. It's so nice, hun. I love this, like, assembly. You're assembling it on the spot. Oh, it's so pretty, the copper. So I feel like it's a great option that we, I'm glad we still kind of have at least some of these available. We do anticipate the copper kit selling out, so maybe we can add on another option down the road if there's interest, either in orange or another color. Uh, but for now, we have these, our, our two fabulous herringbone and peyote stitch kits that Danielle and, sort of amazingly put together. And Sam, do you sell... Do you sell the caps alone? I do, I'm but I'm totally sold out right now after the gotcha. last class and tier cast is a little low these days, but we will eventually have them in the shop regularly when they're available. So hopefully. Yeah, hopefully you know, I have, I have a, a, I've got more. I got some from John Bean. So if you would like, I will send you mine. You can build the wait list a little bit. <laughs> okay. I, I, yeah, I appreciate it. Um, yeah. So there's the copper version. And with that copper That's chain, pretty. Oh, so gorgeous. So where do you want to start today's class, Danielle? Well, like, the reason I asked about the caps is folks can design their own kit. They can get the caps from you, they can get the seed beads, and they can get any kind of like interest bead to do this little spiral with. And once you've seen this technique, you'll be able to do it with any beads. And there's yeah. other sizes that work too. Yeah, for this kit, we chose two millimeter fire polish, which are kind of a specialty that you don't see a lot. And we mix those with the Tenno check for this herringbone. Yeah. And this is a very cool color. It just looks, I mean, it doesn't even show up as well right here on this camera, but it it really does look like it's little flames. <laughs> right? I know. They're literally, they're one of the coolest sea beads I've ever seen. That's why I wanted, that's why I was like, when you showed those, I was like, oh my God, we have to do, we have to design around those. They're so special. Absolutely. Yeah. They're just the really coolest beads. And your kit comes with 22 grams of it, right? Like 20, 22. Yeah. You get a whole 22 gram tube of them. Um... That's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's I'm really good. So hopefully you yeah. should have some extra after you make the necklace, but the necklace definitely takes a few seed beads. It does. I measured it. Um, and this took me about between 10 and 11 grams. Okay. And then these each took, um, but like maybe half a gram. So I estimate you can make this whole set with 13 grams and you'd have all of the leftovers. Nice. Oh, that. that's great to hear. Sometimes when I create for a kit, I have to put it in a tube myself to make sure that I don't go over. <laughs> yeah, that makes... yeah. So that's what I did here. And this is my leftovers. Oh, sweet. So you have a lot. You'll be, it'll, it'll go really far, especially when you start introducing the fire polish. And this design's only got three columns. So it, it doesn't take as long as it seems like it would work. I feel like. Yeah, I've never seen herringbone stitch, so I'm I'm just yeah. eager to learn today. I've now I've, I've gotten to see you do a lot of right angle weave and peyote, and I feel like I finally I'm excited to learn a new one today. Well, it's my favorite one. It's the probably one of the most meditative stitches out there, and it's one that I really enjoy. So I hope you like it too. And I think that um, for beginners, I would say definitely. Don't give up the first time you try it because it's something that clicks after like maybe you try it twice. And then when it clicks, you'll be hooked because it's a very relaxing stitch. And it's yeah. very satisfying because the beads like they just lock into place. Like when you add each each of the two pairs and they snap right on top of the ones before it. And there's something about the way that it looks when it's done because it's so intricate. I really that, like it. That, that patterning came with the spiral, the two millimeters, so special. So 
like we should jump in because I, I want to yeah. think we need some time for this one. Yeah. And so um, I had a thought. I was going to show it with Edo okay. first, just so you guys can get the stitch down. And there are diagrams in the PDF. I, I worked really hard to make them as clear as possible with the understanding that no level of clarity is going to substitute for seeing it. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's nice the thinking. combination of the class and the PDF. So if folks want yeah. for the PDF, that's linked in the description of this video. Um, I also have it linked on the listings themselves, but it's kind of easy to get to this video and then get to the link um, with, with the PDF. So that's kind of how I recommend grabbing that. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, and you grabbed, you're gonna try it out with some other beads from the shop, so cool. Yeah. And I had some suggestions of things if you wanna practice, if like you really love this look and you just wanna master it and then make the, the master final class to have it be the tinies, things like this. So these are Druks. You had a Druk party last, I think this was like the giveaway thing? Yeah, you got, we had the free Druk day. This with a size 8 seed bead will be a perfect one-off to do this in a larger version. Really? Oh, that's, I, I love this. You're, you're keeping the, the Druk party going today. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's cool. And then I thought, English cuts? Why not? These are three millimeter, right? 3.5. Yeah, this yeah, could be a little big, but I'm going to try it anyway. Okay. Yeah, they're definitely a little bit more than three, I think. Yeah, they are. So it all comes down to the height. So here's where, if you're trying to decide how can I make this work, um, you'll want to compare the height of your beads. And so the height of the fire polish and the height of the tenno check were good enough. They were close enough that I was able to get this. It's the height that matters. It's okay if it's a little bit um, sticking out. In fact, that even can make it look cooler. Mm -hmm. But it's the height that, that really counts because if it's not the same height, the stitches won't line up and they need to stock. And when you're measuring height, is that from... The, where the hole starts and ends? Is that, is that you're considering the height? Oh, yes. Yeah. So a height would be um, like if you put it on a needle mm -hmm. this way, the height would be this. Cool. Awesome. And then the width would be this. And the width can be bigger slightly and it would still work out. Interesting. Okay. I feel like cool. it So I'm going to try this. And if it doesn't work, then I'll pull in these purple drukes. I know the drukes for sure are going to work because I've actually done that before with Edo. Yeah. Um, but I was just fascinated with that color and how neat that looks. And, <laughs> I know if anybody else was at that live sale, it was, was it last week that you did the English cuts or the week before? Yeah, really recently. We only, yeah, those were, those are amazingly popular. They're so yeah, shiny. I, I loved them. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till you get the app. <laughs> Which one? For sales, for the app for sales. I can't oh, wait. <laughs> oh, it's going to be, I'm so excited. Very I can't excited. wait. Yeah. <laughs> Danielle's commenting that what, what, soon enough we're going to have the live sales in the app itself. Um, yeah, it's going to be really cool. Because you can save your wish list in there and stuff. And then if the, I'm picturing like if, it, if, you're, if it's on your wish list and it's in the live sale, it will tell you. Like, oh, yeah. All that functionality is there, I feel like. It's so cool. This is your tech background coming out. I can feel it. <laughs> I've just I've been looking at apps now because you inspired me. I'm like, this is a neat idea for like kits, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it would just like have all the supplies there, and you just click on the kit. With them. Yeah. Danielle's app of of all of all like patterns and PDFs. My goodness, it'd be unstoppable. That's so cool. Dreams. I have these dreams. I need like four lifetimes, but I will get to them. And so um, what I got here, um, and I didn't, I didn't narrate what I was doing there, but I did flatten the end of this wildfire so that I can go through my needle a little bit easier. And then um, work with as small a needle as you can stand to. Uh, a 12 would be great, a 10 will still work. Um, but I do think the smaller needle can be somewhat helpful for getting through the 10 O's multiple times. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to cut this one here. And so I am working with a size eight seed bead right now and a three, three-ish millimeter bead. It's a little bigger. I'm doing that to demo the first time and then we'll switch to the tinies. The tinies, not only are they small, but they're also a dark color. And the dark color is gonna complicate really seeing what's going on. Gotcha. So, so here's what's going on. In the handout, what you'll see is like kind of a layout of the necklace. It has some, some geography if you wanna make it exactly like this. I started with just plain rows and I did 30 rows, which in the 10 is about two inches. Then I started introducing the spiraling fire polish, which is really easy. You just introduce a bead and then on the next row above it, 
you introduce the bead one position over from the former. You just keep doing that for 60 rows, about four inches, and then end with 30 rows, it's about two inches. Would you so you'll you have the spiral? Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. It catches the light really nicely. Nice. And for some reason, like with the fire color in the sunlight sparkling, because the fire color doesn't reflect, but it glows when light mm -hmm. hits it. But these sparklies, they uh, reflect the light and it looks really cool. That's such an, it was such a good idea. You were like, we should throw in some, we should add in some fire polish. That was such a nice idea for this kit. Oh, thanks, Sam. And thanks for going for it. I think listening to all my crazy ideas, it takes patience. <laughs> I love all the ideas. <laughs> I try to tone it down, but sometimes I just can't help myself. <laughs> I haven't even told Danielle yet that I have like a, a secret last big bag of joy caps in, I don't remember what finish that I, that I got in. I haven't even told her yet. Uh -huh. Another finish? Uh-huh. Really? I think it's a standard finish, but like I was able to snag a big bag of them. Oh, okay. So Yeah, because we'll, we'll... um, I've only seen the Black Ox from you. No one else has that. Oh yeah, it's, it's no. This one thing is just silver plate, maybe. Um, but I wanted to tell you about it before I added them to the shop inventory in case you wanted, in case you ah, wanted any more so I can... <laughs> ideas, because you seem to have plenty. <laughs> oh yeah, we can because uh, these caps. What I'm doing with these caps is one of like a thousand ideas that you can use them for. Yeah, like, we haven't done any netted rope yet. So many things. Say? Oh, we haven't done a netted rope. Like these are like they're. Perfect for netted ropes. Um, you can do an Edo herringbone on them, like we're doing here. Mm -hmm. You can do um, a different kinds of peyote stitch, also fit. The the kind that we did the other day was where you make a tube, mm -hmm. but the kind where you just keep going in a circle, that also works. And there's other stitches that I actually kind of want to try that I haven't. Like I want to try some helixes and see if that works out. We're getting into the realm of like two hour bead weaving classes, but. See, this is, what, this is how a typical conversation with Danielle and I goes. We're like, it's like we could do all of these things, but for today, I'll let you get going because I am just, I am now, I will. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, if you guys remember from before, because we're going to glue it into a cap, we don't have to worry about um, the tail very much. So the tail is just going to get glued. I do weave it in but not super much. I mean, I just kind of like bring it down through a few beads and it's good enough. And I always bring it back up to end on the outside so that when you put the cap on, the glue touches it and it just kind of locks everything in. So we get to be lazy about weaving in for this one. Um, and what you'll want to do first is we're going to ladder stitch. So ladder stitching can be done with different combinations of beads. We're going to do it with stacks. So we're going to take stacks of two beads and ladder them. And we only need to make six stacks because this is a three column design. In herringbone, every stack pair counts as a column. So here's the first one. Basically, I'm bringing on four beads. And then I'm going to come back up through the first two. And then pull tight and come back down through the second two we added. So there's a square there. And you can tie it up if you want to, but you don't really need to right now because when we add the herringbone row, you can make another pass through these. And when you start with the tens, the smallies, the extra pass starts to feel tight. So um, I'm not going to reinforce like I normally would. Those of you guys that have taken my classes before and seen us do ladders. I like to reinforce ladders, but I'm not going to do that here because it's going to end up happening. Anyway, um, here's two. Now pick up two more. And go ahead and bring that through the last two. You want to go in the beads in the opposite direction of the beads that um, the thread the threads exiting. So coming in through this side and that's position's going to change for every one you add. So you just want to pay attention to where was my thread before. And then just tighten everything up. So you should have three stacked beads in a row like that. Come up through those beads. And if it's a little loose on you, just, just bear with it for just a minute. And we're gonna get two more. And then come down. So there's four, and now we need two more to make a three column design. So let's get two more here. Now 
whenever I'm working with uh, laddering, I do tend to pinch the work a little bit. I do that for tension. It really helps. And here's my last set. Let's get these two on. Where are you okay. pinching? What's that? Where are you pinching? I'm actually holding like that. And then I'm going to try something hand. really quick. Um, it's going to get fuzzy for a second. Sorry, guys. I want to see if it'll autofocus for me. A little better. Looks good. So I sometimes I'm holding it like that. And sometimes I'm holding it kind of with both. So top, bottom, and then I'm using this to stabilize it. And it's just to keep the, the beads from the ones before from moving as I add the new one. With the goal of just getting six like that. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. And so we're still 2D right now. We're gonna go 3D next. And in order to do that, we need to turn this into a tube. So what you'll do is you'll take this side and you'll just meet the other side. And don't worry about it being round just yet. We are gonna put it on the pegs, but you just fold it over for now. And when you fold it over, it'll do like something like that. And you actually want to go through the side that your thread's coming out of, in this case, the tail. And that's just because we want to do a circle. We want to go from here to here, and then from here back to here. Just making a circle to join those into a ring. So I'm going to pull that through. And then through this one. And there's the little ring there. And it doesn't look like much right now. It's all collapsing and it's not as we'd hoped. Um, but what we're gonna do next is gonna straighten all that out. Two things. First, you wanna get our working thread. So here's our tail, right? We wanna get our working thread on this side. So pick a side, any side, and go through it. It doesn't matter at this point which one you go through. Just choose one that's next to the one that you're coming down from and come up. So now I've got my working thread in the side and my tail thread on the side. And let's grab one of the caps. And I just put the set over here. Let me grab one of these out of here. And using the tail side first, we're not gonna glue it yet or weave in yet, just, we, I'm gonna use this as a way to tighten up at the end. And keep in mind, this is a size eight, so it's fit on the cap is not as great your size 10 seed beads are going to go on a lot tighter. And the important thing to note about that is this is a tension guide. So it's basically perfect. And I think this is really interesting, but it, it works for both. Let me bring back the tube over here. Here's the laddered side. Here's the laddered side of this tube in the 10 out. Same number of columns. Fits the cap great. And then the 80 also fitting the cap, pretty good. This is a very loose fit. This is a super tight fit. I think something to do with the internal hole diameter is different um, because these, the, these beads ha, are filling in more of that space. So you end up with the same internal hole diameter in both of those rings. Yeah, it's so interesting um, how close they are. Yeah, and I figured that was kind of, that will help somebody designing who gets like hooked on this and wants to do more they can use 8 next and try that. Um, the only thing I would say about glue is um, this one, you're gonna need to really be like, the glue matters here because this is so loose. If you're using 8 it's gonna be a loose connection, but it's great because um, you can use E6000, it's got some, some thickness to it. And if you let it cure properly, you will have a fine fit. I have herringbones with Edo that I've made on these caps that I'm still wearing. I've been wearing them for like four years. Oh, wow. Okay. The glues never come off. Sometimes I use Wonder Clip or something to like hold it while it's curing like that. Mm -hmm. For this one, you don't need to worry about it at all. The fit is so tight that I actually recommend doing the stitching on the cap so that you don't make your tension too tight for it to fit. Mm-hmm. In a, in a secure fit with glue, everyone knows like the more contact you have, the better your glue is gonna gonna stay. So this one, I have no concerns. The glue is gonna be it's gonna be awesome. Like it can support its own weight. It's that it's that strong. But just you know something to think about while you're stitching. So from here on, um, I actually would stitch on the cap, 
It's going to be tricky for the first row because you have to move it up to get your thread around it. If that's too tricky and putting it on the cap is, is kind of annoying, go ahead and take it off the cap and do each row and then put it back on. So let me show you what I mean by that. Starting here, we've now. We've got two beads exiting from here. It doesn't matter what direction you choose. You can go this way or you can go this way, whichever one you want. I'll go right. Why not? Let's go right. When you pull down, those beads are going to sit side by side like that. They're just going to sit like that. And then you can put it back on the cap after you come up through the next ones. So we went down through that, that column and now we're coming up through the adjacent column. And you can use your tail, if I can find my tail over here, to kind of help you with tightening your tension there. See, like that. Let's put it back on the cap. And make sure that it didn't get too tight. Here's two more beads. And come down. And the 8 are so big that I can actually stitch it on the cap, no problem. You'll struggle a little more doing that with the 10s, because the 10s are going to come and they're going to gonna hit into the cap. I'll show that in a little bit here. Um, so out of that two went down, and you need to come up through the next two. Pick up two more. Down through the last remaining one. And there's your first row of herringbone, all done. There's the top view, side view. So I want to check in. Sam, do you want me to do that again? I think everyone sure. wants to start from the beginning. Oh. Yeah. I will let I will let whatever for your own flow. I'm I'm not gonna get in the way of how you like to demo it. Well, sometimes for my other classes, I end up doing it twice just because you know, it's it's a big thing, like starting, right? So, but how's everyone feeling? I can see the chat. I see a question about E6000. Yeah, E6000 is really good, especially when you're doing, if you're doing 8 absolutely, because mm -hmm. E6000 is nice and thick. But on some of the other ones, like you could just use watch glue for something like that. It's much tighter. It would be okay. I think there's like an Aline's metal jewelry glue that also works great. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And in case folks also, I'm obviously going to keep show more rows as we go anyway. Yes. So mm -hmm. I will, we, whatever you like to do, that sounds great. Well, I could keep going. And then if anyone at the end is like, hey, I just, I'm just not clicking, I'll start again. Plus, I'm going to demo it again for the Tenno. So that's what I was thinking also. Maybe we'll and just, of course, most folks yeah. are going to be watching this on a replay so they can pause and go back for that's any That's true. Yeah, that's, that's actually a good point because the kits aren't in hand yet for, for yeah. everyone. So cool. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. And that way we make sure we get to everything. And so we just added that last, that last one, right? I'm going to go ahead and step up. And what I mean by a step up is after we added each of these two, we went down, we were coming back up to the next one. We're going to do that same thing again here, coming up through the next one. But now there's a bead above it, right? It's the first bead we added in this round. <laughs> Sorry, Cindy. <laughs> Yeah, and then, uh, but you want to come up through the bead above it. And the reason you want to do that is that's called a step up, and that puts us in the position to build the, the next row above it. So we'll keep going. I'm going to put it back on the cap. Now, at this point, I've exceeded the height of my cap, and I can work freely without it if I want to. I can use it as a you know, placeholder if I want. Whatever your hand likes doing, it's totally fine. When you're working with the Tenno, it's going to take you more than three rows to get to the height of the end cap. I recommend working, if not on the cap itself, but after every stitch you add, placing it back on and using that as the place where you pull your tension tight. Um, pulling that tension tight while it's on the cap is going to make sure it fits later. And uh, it's really easy to make it too tight, just as a warning, because I did that on some of mine. But so here's the next row. Let's start the next one. Two beads. Um, two beads. And we're exiting from, from right here, right? From this bead. So we're going to go to the adjacent one. And we're just going down to one bead this time because we we had a ladder stitched row that was a stack of two before. And now we only have, you know, a single bead in our last row. And you're always just going through the last row you made. Our last row just had one bead in height. So we're just going through one and turn and uh, come up through the next one. Picking up two beads. We're going to come down through here. And the part I love about herringbone is this little pop. 
the disc go boop. There's pop into place. Stepping up through the next one. I love that. <laughs> it's really fun. It's just as satisfying in the flat stitch too, so that you can see all the beads just going exactly like that. It's um like it's like a little flow to it. And so there's another row. I'm gonna make one more row and then let's start adding the extra the extra bead. So here's the next so why one. Why are we doing herringbone today <clears throat> versus say, a peyote like we did for the earrings? I feel like that'd be a good basic question for folks. Oh, um, well actually the, the first reason is because we already did peyote and I just wanted to do something else it's pretty, so I can share something new. Um, but also herringbone, um, this spiral thing that I'm going to do, it's really fun and easy with, her with herringbone. Like if you wanted to do this in peyote, you could, but you would need a pattern and you'd have to follow that pattern and then you'd have to fold it into a tube. That was the element I was curious about. Which which ones can be adapted into it into like a long tube so that it lays nicely for a necklace? So this one, the peyote stitch tubes that we did before, they they don't bend. They're like right. And if you wanted to make that into like a bangle, it it just wouldn't bend enough. I mean, if you made it super super long, maybe, but the kind of stitches that bend that actually have an open core that you can put a peg on would be a peyote stitch in the round. Uh, so you see like this one, we built it as a square and then we folded it up. Right. The round peyote stitch starts with a ring and then you're you're building on the ring and you just keep going and going and going. That one's quasi-flexible, but not great. So not as flexible as herring, herringbone's more flexible than that. Gotcha. But the most flexible stitch of all, the one that I think is the, the greatest jam for like a rope stitch is that netted rope. Gotcha which we will have to do it sometime because it's a really fun one. That sounds awesome. And there's actually, that was the uh, that was the one we went with when I did the uh, projects for TierCast for these caps. That's the, the one they chose was my knitted rope one. That's I think they also ended up using the herringbone too. But yeah, on TierCast website, I have the knitted rope pattern and, and the herringbone pattern. Oh, that's cool. So folks, folks, you can always, anyone can access oh. TierCast library, by the way, on their website. Super recommend it. There's a lot of like just treasures on there. Someone, not me, somebody did a right angle weave, like cubic right angle weave rope, like a prismatic on these pegs. Wow. It's... I've never done it. I, I need to. I need to do it. Because well, I will really get, cool. for folks, well, I will get more of these caps as soon as I can. I cannot believe <laughs> I'm not, I just would have not been able to have enough at any moment. We haven't even had enough yeah. to make all the kits. I had I, I had a, a shortage of them for a while too. It was right in the beginning of 2020. Oh yeah, well they were out of everything then. And I literally drove. I don't know if anyone else is in Washington with me, but I drove to Monroe from Redmond. I drove to all the Ben Franklins and got them. <gasps> <laughs> Order, <laughs> because I didn't know how long this thing was going to go on for, and I needed my stitch fix. <laughs> <laughs> And they didn't know when they were going to open again, so they were happy to sell. Like, oh <laughs> so I'm like, God. okay. <laughs> that is too funny. You do what you got to do, right? <laughs> and so, yeah, this. I hope everyone's loving this as much as I do because this is really fun. And if you if you feel good, you got this far, you'll have 30 rows of experience by the time you're introduced to the fire polish on the main design. But in this one, I was thinking I would just start it right now. Maybe it could be like a bracelet length. Um, so I'm going to start bringing in a new bead. And again, what I meant earlier by height, let me grab, grab a needle. So when you're looking at your stash and you're like, hey, what will work? Just look at your, your bead heights. They're not perfect, but I feel like that's close enough, right? It's going to have a little bit of variation, but the same was true with the fire polish on the 10 but it wasn't enough to make it not work. So I'm testing this for the first time, but I have a, a good feeling about it. Like it's going to work out. So go ahead and pick up your bead as regular, and then it doesn't really matter where you start the, the first um, the first bead. And <laughs> yeah, and I think somebody um, tell her somebody started a company called Stitch Fix now, but I was saying that like way before they started <laughs> a clothing thing. I think is it? Should I get it right? I don't know. Oh uh, right, right, I, right. <laughs> like, will they send you clothes you didn't pick? Yeah, that's 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 the one. I'm like, I don't know if I could. I'm, I would return all everything. <laughs> not the same old stuff I like. But yeah, so there's the 
there's the first one. So all I did was herringbone, the same thing we've been doing, but I just introduced one extra little bead there. Do the rest of the row normal, like you, like you regular would. Yeah, we definitely have good visibility on the eightos. That was smart to start with those. Yeah, I'm hoping it helps because once it clicks, your mind will fill in the gaps for what you can't see when I'm showing the tons. So there's a step up. See, I'm going through the last bead of that row and then the one that I just added in, in that one. All right. So there's that row done. And the next thing I want to do is another row. But every time I introduce a new one of these fire, uh, fire brush, uh, English cuts, I'm going to place it in the next position over from where it was in the previous row. So this column is going to be normal. We're going to put two regular beads there like that. Come up through the next one. And now this is where I want my next special bead to be, plus a regular bead. It's always two, right, for every stitch. Bring that down. I do have to help the special beads sometimes if they're taller. To help it, use your use your uh, your needle to pick up the thread just in between the two beads, and then let each one fall down the rainbow like that, and they'll sit nicely. So you see that spiral starting to go. Totally. And let's finish the row. Next one. And then here's a step up. All right. Here's another row. I don't know if I said yet, these are the Terra intensive sea beads Dan Danielle's using. So if you want to try this with the Eidos, you definitely can. We have, this is like the dark green, we call it green turquoise in the shop. Um, yes. And they're a really cool Czech sea bead that is, has these amazing variety of colors. I think we have nine colors in the shop that you can make like any palette you want out of. I was so excited when you got these beads. I have so many more patterns that I want to do. You're welcome Probably back gonna anytime. Blow up you already shop. know that, though. <laughs> <laughs> I have one in, I'm working on. It's not something new for, for some of my other students. Like Cindy will know we already did it. But I did a flat chenille. Um, and I would love to do a flat chenille with the Terra Intensives. I think that would be really cool. you have to show me what that is. It's beautiful. Oh, my God, it's beautiful. And it can be done with so many variations. That's another fun part. And I was going to do one with like color blocking all the tear intensives in one bracelet. Because enough colors, it could never be too many. <laughs> How do you spell chenille? Um, it's uh, in this case it was C-H-E-N-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And that's actually a recently invented stitch, which was also fascinating to me. I remember the first name of the person who invented it was Sandrine. I can't remember her last name. Um, she actually invented this stitch. And oh wow, I just looked it up. Like, Beautiful. That is cool. Can you picture that? With you, I would use the ten o as the small bead, and then like the eleven o. Uh, sorry, the eight o as the big one, and then color block that out. Oh yeah. All the way down. Like, this is like this looks like a lot of fun. Beautiful. All the color. This is great. And this thing, whatever this is I've got going here, I'm finishing this. I'm going to finish it for sure. And it's going to be also color blocked because I got all the English cuts. Oh, oh, what? <laughs> oh my gosh. You feel all together. Oh my God. I was naughty. But can you picture it with all the colors? And then each time I'll introduce a new one and it'll just like be like this cool sprawling. Like, oh, I, I can see it. Thing. I can absolutely see it. I can't wait. And I think I actually might have some free time this weekend to work on it. You never stop beating, Danielle. Well, beating for me is actually a treat. It's like if I'm doing it for like work stuff, right. I mean, even the work stuff's fun. It's but getting still, to do like it's your own projects. That. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So I keep, I've been keeping going. I wanted to go one full spiral around so I could show you guys 
what one full rotation looks like, and then maybe we'll switch to the tenno. I'm almost there. You see how fast it goes with Edo? You'd be done with the bracelet in like an hour. Or yeah, less. Yeah, so cool how, how because the, I don't know, it's so nice to see that this could make such lovely matching bracelets and necklaces because of the tube option, tubular effect. Yes. Or, and the yeah. curvature. So there's one whole rotation. See how it's come back to center here? It's meant the bead that it was at before. And that's all you do. You just offset its position. Every new row you do, put it in a new spot. Wow. And that's the whole thing. Oh, um, and then let's see. So the only other thing that you would want to know from here after you stretched out the whole length is how to finish it on the cap. I could show that now, or we could switch to starting and then show that at the end. What do you think? What was the first option? What, what was the, what was the... Um, Well, so when we go to finish it yeah. on the cap, see how it's, see how herringbone's open mm -hmm. like that? You have to close it. And then when I do the closing, I close it around the cap. But not only that, I build the last rows on the cap. Yeah, so, do you want to go ahead? we could show that now if wall with the eight O's. Yeah, then we'll have a full stream. So of everything start to finish and then it'll all make sense. So I'm gonna do a couple of rows with just eight O. I did something different there. There we go. So that's the first one of that row. Get the next one here. Coming up. And one more. One thing that I could mention for when you work with the, when you're adding the spiral beads is it could be really easy to miss your step ups because the height differential is just a little tricky. So just watch for it. And you can always pull out the stitch if you need to. So don't worry if it gets funny. Um, so coming back through here. All right. I'm going to start kind of tightening my, so I'm going to actually make the row and then when I do the tightening, I'm going to put the cap back in there. This makes a lot more sense to do with the tenno. With the, with the eight-o, they're so big, it doesn't matter. With the tenno, it starts getting tight and where it's getting tight is here, this connection here. So what I do is I get to this spot, get these on there, bring that down, and get ready to do my step up, bring on the cap. And when I do the step up, because this is where you really get it like a tight, like that. So that spot. And I don't know if you guys can see when this started to lock into place. You know, with the 8 there's no gap here. With the 10 you'll have a slightly bigger gap than you did through the rest of the stitch. And then you start to finish it up. See, like right here. I'm sorry. I'm out of camera. Like right there. Mm -hmm. You can almost see the, the, the copper reflecting. It's not an absolutely perfect fit. So that's why it can be helpful to finish it, finish it on the cap. It's an incredibly tight fit though, which is really great for a bead to grow up. So hopefully that helps someone. I would do another row. So from here, it can be really hard to stitch the actual adding of beads while the cap's there. So just setting it aside, I'm gonna go ahead and start my next row. But this time, when I do this next part right here, before I go too tight, Again, I'm just gonna kind of hold it there. The mat helps. Pushing down on the mat is definitely. But this is what I mean. Even though this is a beginner technique, adding getting the tension on the cap moves it up into being kind of quasi intermediate. Because you are kind of having to fuss with this a little bit and make it make it work. Okay, so holding that there. This one's the most important. It's the step up one. And so if you did that when you were 
adding your rows and this this is good with two maybe three rows on this one it's going to be like four or five before you'll feel like you've got the cap height covered mm -hmm. you definitely want to cover the height of your cap doing these these row ads um, when you get it like this see how they're open here on the cap go ahead and come down through the next so we just added that row we did our step up and come down through the without adding a new bead so kind of like you're still doing the same stitch, but without adding a new bead, come down through this one and come up through the next one. And you want to turn down to the next. So you see, I'm just, I'm closing it up. So I zigzagging yeah. through to bring it all together. Yeah, essentially I'm doing, it's like I'm adding a row. Cause you know how when we add a row, it's when you come down here and come up to the next one that it connects the former. Mm -hmm. so you, the rows aren't connected until you add the row above it. Um, but in this case, I'm not adding a new row. I'm just doing like a jump from, you know, the, so from here, right? Coming over here and just going straight down to the bead. But it's giving me the ability to close up everything. So here's the step up right here, I think. I'm not there yet. Where do I have one more to go? Nope, I'm there. And so you'd step up through the beads. And in this case, it looks like I already did that. Oh, there's no step up on the last row because I didn't add new beads. And you'll see that too. You'll see that there's, I don't know if it's coming over, but let me get my focus right. There's already a piece of thread. Uh, there's already a thread right here. Let me get these out of the way. here. So I've already got a thread right there. If you, I don't know if you guys can see it reflecting on top of the, ne the needle there. So I know I need to go from this one to this one. Right. And what I was forgetting was that there's no step up because I don't have any beads on top. So mm -hmm. I just forgot that. So hopefully that didn't confuse anyone. But there we go. When you do this last little pull tight, you do it on the peg and everything should be fine. Now, even if you take the peg out, you've got good tension. Um, I do weave it in on the peg. So from here to weave in, all you would do is you just kind of hold it in place, um, travel back down. And it doesn't really matter where you go from here, but every time you do this, it's going to get tighter. So coming around, just following the existing path through the beads. For folks who are receiving, you're saying they follow the existing thread paths. Yeah, so everything we did before where we were coming up and going down, I'm doing that all again, I'm going over thread that's already there. But I'm doing it for two reasons. One is I want to weave in so that I can trim the thread away. And it's also making it tight on the peg. And one of the cool things I noticed is that um, because the 8.0 is so loose on the pegs, after you do this, maybe once or twice around, it's a lot less loose on the peg and it actually can stay on. Cause you guys notice I was having to really hold it and just flying out, right? But now look. Well, okay. <laughs> it gets there. I keep going. Wah, wah, wah. Once we finished the weave in, we had some folks uh, with some questions about when to incorporate the non-standard bead, like in this case, the, the English cut? Yeah, a couple of, oh, well, so the, the short answer is anywhere you want, but in the handout, I put a diagram of what I did on the sample necklaces. So it shows the um, basically two inches of regular rows, which is 30 regular rows. Then you start adding the new beads and you do that for 60 rows. And then you um, add tw uh, 30 more regular rows at the end of that 60. So you'll get four inches of length that has a spiral on it in the center and two inches of length that don't on the side. And on more of a, like a micro level, I think that's also part of the question. I think they're curious how they knew it was time to even put like, or like, so because you're, I'm guessing the pattern is going to be a good visual aid. Um, to know when the next next English cut comes. Oh, you mean like for each row? Yeah. 
Yeah. So when you're um, adding each of these rows, so um, when I was, when I added the first one, right, I finished that row with regular beads. Then I did the step up. And when I did the step up, I created another row. And when I got to the spot that is basically one position over from the former, add it there, finish the rest of the row with regular beads, step up. And it's going to change every time, but just make sure you, you got to pick a direction. Are you going left or right? Um, and then if whatever direction you're going, make sure that every row you add the bead, just one position over from where the former one was. So there's always a step and, up to finish the row. And then it just basically starts, the next one basically starts with a English cut. Is the basic? No, idea? no. In fact, every time you create any row that the, 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 the placement just depends on where the former one was. And it, actually you got to watch for it because um, for example, uh, when we when we added the first one, we went ahead and made it the first bead, right? We picked up the English cut, and then we added this bead, and we went down, came back up. Here's the regular beads we stitched. Came back up. Regular beads, and then we did a step up. So now we're here. So then you pick up one regular bead and add an English cut. Finish the row with regular beads. Uh, so every time, and there's one spot, and it's right before you make a full rotation where you just added an English cut, and you got to add another one right after that because that's the next spot. And you got to watch for it. And you'll know, um, you'll know if you've missed it because you'll see it. It'll just jump out at you. So, like from here, we came down through here and then went up to the next beads. The very next bead here would be an English cut if I was continuing. So from here to here. Gotcha. Really but yeah, helpful. there's also a diagram. It's unfortunately because this is 3D, it was hard to show it. But what I did was a 2D flat lay illustration mm -hmm. that shows the placement in a pattern, in pattern form. But in order to show it in a spiral, I would need a 3D model like this. So it, um, and I mean, you could write a word chart that says, hey, this row, you add it here, and then it's A-A-A-A, and then you could do that, but you you kind of wouldn't, it would be too much work to sit there and look at the pattern, because once you get the flow, you won't need it. Mm -hmm. It'll just be like, yeah, it'll just come to you, because you can see it, you can see where the next one is. And then I also, I've made mistakes where I always miss that first one, where just, so right here where it's crossing over, and you're adding them back to back. See, this next, very next bead is going to be one. And that watch for it because you'll miss it. And if you do, just pull your work back out and go back and and put it back on. It'll be fine. Cool. Cool. Oh, right, we got our one hundred and one. Is it is it time for? Yeah. So our let's switch to the others. Yeah. And then I just want to show um, when I ended this weaving in, I ended it with my thread up here, so that I can trim it there. And when I do my gluing, my end is in the glue. Same here tails in the glue. Super so smart. that's pretty much it. How well those caps hide everything. The same thing in the lantern class. I love it. It's very fun. And also, this makes a cute beaded bead. Even if you yeah. don't do anything Where else. Go. Super fun. So let's, um, let's see. I'm going to use, I'm going to cut a new strand. A new strand of wildfire here. And, you know, this is going to be a little harder to see than the last demo. But it's okay. You're, it'll still work out. These are super tiny. <laughs> They're really, really tiny. I didn't even know that 2 millimeter fire polish honestly existed until you suggested I find them for this kit. I oh, really? They're like, a, they're a premium item. Like, I was like, looking at those, because they, sometimes the smaller something gets, like, the fancier and more, the more premium and costly they get. I was shocked. Oh. Are they more expensive? Oh yeah. I mean, maybe huh. I'd have to look at exactly like price per bead difference, but like I think they, they get pricier because they're having to make facets on the tiniest little beads. Interesting. A Druk would be a nice, more affordable alternative. Oh, Druks, Druks are like- two millimeter Druks, right? Two, I've seen three millimeter. Their mouth, there's probably a two millimeter. Yeah. But the three millimeters work, we said work well with the with the eight O's. 
yeah, three millimeters is a great way to make it a little more affordable in anything three millimeters. So, so fire polish, droops, these cute little English cuts work, uh, any of them. The only, um, the only thing I think might not work is something like a disc, like a disc spacer, because those are, those are going to fill the inside of the tube too much and stick out too much to make the next bead sit. Maybe, but I could be wrong. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've, I always try the bead, see if it works. If it doesn't, you've lost a few minutes of time testing something and you have knowledge and nothing is or really you, lost. Yeah, there. Or you've discovered something amazing. Or you discover something and it's amazing. And yeah, so it's always a win. And so I think what I'll do here is I will just demo the laddering and then demo rows on the peg. I'll make sure we cover the peg. Um, and then it's probably going to take about 10 rows of regular stitching to, to properly demo that. But back to where we started, we, we've got we've got four rows, uh, sorry, four beads going on. And the tail we need to leave, so the amount over here can be as little as like four inches if you want. Just enough that it doesn't go flying when you're stitching. And what you'll want to do is come up through the first two beads coming in through where the tail is exiting. So you just want to come up through those first two right there. And apologies for the tininess, but it's stunning, right? It's The smaller the bead, the more stunning a stitch looks when you complete it, I feel like. So there's that first uh, ladder stitch. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's cool. Cindy, thanks for mentioning that. I was going to tell Sam about those. Super affordable two millimeters, tiny crystals. I've sent a bunch to Sarah Lovecraft, and she's been using them. She likes them, too. Um, so coming up through, so there's those two there. Two more. So this is just that ladder stitch. What we're doing is ladder stitching six stacks of two into this little position here. And the cool thing about the wildfire, the 0.06 wildfire and a size 10 check is the fit is so snug that you actually get a lot less wobble and wonky looking starts than, and less need to reinforce also because it's filling up the bead. Yeah, well, that's nice. And it makes it trickier to get multiple passes, but you'll be okay for three passes and then it'll start to get where you might want to have a size 12. Mm -hmm. Needle. Yeah, but I think that, um, yeah, size 12 needle, sorry. I, I think this, this stitch, you can only really need to do two passes and the exception of weaving in, which would represent a third pass. So here we've got one, two, three, four, five. And now here's six. So doing the little beads, um, if you've never done this before, practice with some Edo because then you'll feel more confident. Um, but this is really no harder and no different than what we were just doing. It's just smaller. So there it is. It's just, um, let's see if I can get the light a little better. You guys can see it's got six on there. I'm going to find a, here we go. Let's see if that works. Nah, the focus isn't great, but it's basically six stacks of two, just like in the handout. The handout has a diagram of this exact step. So you'll be able to see that. And now we got to join it right into a ring. And so to join it into a ring, basically what you want to do is just, you want to go through these beads. So we're going to come from here and go through this side, which will put our red exiting up here, right? And we're going to come over and go through this side. And when you do that, you'll get a ring and we'll put it on the cap and make sure that it fits really great. And then we'll start building rows. So I'm going to come up through this one right here on this side. So again, that's coming from this side, going up through this side. And when you pull tight, it forms a ring, but that rings open on this top part, right? It's closed, closed down here on the bottom, but we need to 
close it on the top. So to do that, you just go back down with the beads you were just coming out of. So there's that little ring. And just like before, we've closed up the ring, but our working threads on the bottom and our tail threads on the bottom. And I want the tail thread to be coming out on the opposite side. So I'm just going to go up through the next set of beads here. Another thing to notice is feel for some resistance. You don't want to try to stitch through your thread. It's going to happen easier with the tenno because there's less place to, to dodge it. And so it just feeling, if you feel like the bead just will not go through, wiggle it around a little bit and it will help. And then the first rows also, you don't really have much to hold on to, to to grip while you're pulling through. So you might need a little help. Like I just used my chain and those pliers to help me pull my needle through. And there's our, there's our little ring. I'm going to put it on the cap here. And slide that down. And so this is going to be my tension guide for a little bit. And another cool thing about the Tenno is there's room to work on the peg. You can treat it like a dowel almost. Uh, the size of this peg, I want to mention something really quick in case this helps anybody. These are three millimeter, these pegs. If you go to Home Depot or somewhere like that and you get a three millimeter dowel, you can also build your, your bracelet on the dowel if, if this parasol part is creating any issue for you getting your needle. You could actually build this ring on a three millimeter dowel and then it would fit your peg perfect. But um, I don't actually have one of those. Hand, like, I tried to find one. I'm, the smallest I could find was four. So I know they exist, but I'm using my peg. It's a little trickier. But what's the what size dowel would you want to match? You'd want to get a three millimeter peg? dowel. Yeah. If you wanted to mimic the size of these pegs. I bet you could like order like a three millimeter like steel dowel on the interwebs. Oh. Or, like it would probably work well. If there's because like if wood gets too thin, it'll be so it'll snap so easily. That's really true. Yeah, it would be a, a kind of a weak thing to stitch on. I wonder if that's why the so beetle on makes a dowel set, mm -hmm. but they don't. It goes only down to four millimeter size, and I wonder if that's why. That could abs absolutely be true. Oh, and so sorry. What I'm doing now is I started herringbone. I'm picking up two beads, and then going down through the next stack of two. And just, just like we did before, I'm just building it around. So, um, and then making sure I step up. So here's my last, uh, last ad so coming up through here. I'm just going to pull my working tail thread here because at the moment I'm exiting from the same stack of beads as my tail. So I'm just taking the opportunity to tighten. And now let's get two more beads. and come down through that last section here. And I'm running into this problem where I'm, I'm under the cap now, so I'm gonna have to slide it off to work. Just enough to get my needle through like that. But yeah, so if dodging the cap is hard, don't worry about it too much. Just try to make it not super, super tight. Here's the step up from the previous row. And come through there. And I think just the hardest part of this is just not having a whole lot to hold on to. Um, and that's what makes it different from the larger beads. And my tail's in my loop there. Before I pull it through, I'm going to get my tail free. And there we go. So let's do, um, I'm going to need to do at least two more rows to reach the height of my cap, and then we can lose the cap and start working without the cap on there. Because right. if the other, the, uh, the rest of the bracelet ends up being a little bit tighter than this cap part, no worries. We just need to know that when we put this back on the cap at the end that it's going to fit. So really it's the latter row and the next three rows that you'll need to do while holding it like this. And it gets way easier after the latter row. 
So you just pick up a bead, two beads, go down through the next one. Here's two more. I'm gonna go down through here. And stepping up here. So we're stepping up from the last ones added, the first in the row, and the one we just added right here. Almost to the height of the peg. We've got one more row's height there. So I'm gonna set it down. It's a little easier to see like that. Um, you can see better maybe from this angle about how far we have to go. Let's see if we move it down just a little bit. A little bit better. So this is delicate work. It's tiny, but it is really pretty. And once you get the hang of it, not really hard. I think the hardest part was what I just did, just trying to get it to balance on that peg. So getting that tension right. But the stitch itself, not too hard. It's coming up to the next one. Here's my last one. It, it works fast because we only have three columns. So each row only takes just a second. Here's the step up. And there we go. So all those rows, the first two were ladder rows, right? The first two stacks. And then I did three rows of regular herringbone. And now I'm at the height of the peg. And all my tension worries are over. I can lose the peg for now. You can keep it too. If working on it helps you and you want to hang on to it, that's fine. Um, or you can take it off and still work whichever you like. Also, if you wanted to, you can weave in your tail now on the peg or you can leave that to the end. Totally up to you. I'm gonna make one more row and then let's um, do a kind of jump ahead and we'll add fire polish and we'll really focus on that. Here's one more row. So this is, um, I count the ladder rows as rows, even though that was a stack of two. So of the 30 that it recommends in the pattern, the first two were done as your ladder. So this is row six right now. Here's that step up. There's another row on there. And the peg's just buried down there. All right, so what do you think? Should we should we add any? And I agree. Oh, Cindy's saying she loves those orange beads. Yeah, they're gorgeous. And Sam, you got the other harlequins, right? I got all three types of those. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they're up yet, but when you share those, I definitely. Oh yeah, they're 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 not they're not up there yet. But these are these are the standout ones because they have the most clear two tone quality. There's two other ones that are like a little darker. There's like or green version, and I can't remember what the other one I got was. Um, I think you got I... Christmas? Did you get the green red, uh, green red together? Yes, I got the green and red. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, these I'm trying to remember if we, if we had extra from making the kits. If we do, we'll throw it on the site, Cindy, because these were these were awesome. So, sorry, what were you asking? <laughs> oh, I was asking if um, if this makes sense, and I'll go on to adding uh, adding the fire polish next. Yeah, I think it'd be great to see because folks, this this is where a... folks were curious, like where where do I add the fire polish? Yeah, and that's probably the like the the only other part that's like even remotely tricky. But you can so basically the the rule is anywhere you want for row one. So the row where you start it, it can be the first one you pick up. You can stitch the whole row, make it their last bead. You can make it your second bead. It actually doesn't matter where you start it. It's the relative position for all the subsequent rows where you have to pay attention. This first one, just put it wherever you'd like. I just picked up a regular bead and then the first fire polish bead, and I'm putting them in my first column here. And when you do that, you if you need to help it, see how this one's kind of sideways like that? To help it, just go ahead and pull the thread up in the center and then tighten it. And you'll have to do that at least for a few of them. It, sometimes it needs help and sometimes it doesn't. So here's me going to the next row. Sorry, going to the next column. I'm going to finish the row all with just regular size 10. 
So here's the next one. And then up through the remaining column. Regular 10 O's. And bringing that down. Okay, here's the step up. And for the step up, remember, we've got to go through the first bead and then continue on through the bead we added in this row. So in this case, that ended up being an English cut bead there. And what I'm doing here is just helping this bead sit properly because it's a little wonky. There we go. All right, so from here, and I know it's a little hard to see, but you see how the fire polish is, is in this position. So I know that my next one is gonna need to be one space over. So I pick up a check bead and then a fire, a fire polish. I come down and that check bead should sit over my former fire polish and the new fire polish should be sitting just to the right of it. And if you ended up working from the other direction, like if you're building headed left, I don't know, maybe you're in Australia. If you're doing it this way, it's still gonna work out fine. No worries. It, it doesn't matter what direction you do this in. It's as long as the position relative to the former is offset by one space, you'll still get a spiral. Gotcha. Your spiral will just be going the Australian way. <laughs> So yeah, Your no worries. Your two lefties often will go a different direction when making when assembling like this. You can, yeah. I mean, you um, you can actually change direction while you're working too. It's like you could have one that's spiraling around and then switches direction back. Like you, it would it would form a V shape. Direction. Yeah, like it would come in and then V back and go back out. And you could put like a little dangle right at the tip of that. The stitching doesn't always have to follow the same. No. Spiral. No. We're no, because you're determining, like, you're faking that spiral by where you place the bead. Right. So I, I guess you could change the placement, but in terms of the actual stitching, does that, can that change direction at the end of a row? Like when you do a step um, up? Let's try it. I assume you have to, okay, so you were just talking about the placement of the beads. I thought you meant you literally could stitch a different direction. That's yeah. what I was following. Well, you certainly could if that was how you started it, but actually now that you've mentioned it, <laughs> I really don't see why not. Let's try it. Let me finish this row. I really don't. Oh, think no, I don't. I don't want to just. I don't want to distract. I just. I thought I want to make sure I was understanding properly. <laughs> Great question. I never thought about it before, but I don't see why it wouldn't. Cause check this out. Okay, so here's our step up. Okay, there's that. So stepping up from that row, I'm starting a new row now. Okay. So yeah, once you've committed to working right or left, you're committed because here's what would happen if you try to go back. See the gap here? Mm -hmm. It's a little hard to see, but um, you would actually be creating your row over a new gap. Yeah. Okay. It makes sense. You keep the, the stitching in the same direction. Yeah. That's, that was a part that I thought I thought I'd heard and I, I, I did not hear. No, properly. but like, for example, here, here with the spiral, what I meant is, so from here, naturally I would want to place place my next one here right so so this bead would be a English cut right right but what if call me crazy I decided my next bead that was going to be an English cut was this one right so you can change it right there so now it's going to start going this way and then you'd have a point here and if you wanted to stick a little jump ring in or maybe stitch out a little a little ring of tiny beads you could hang a charm there and the necklace would hang like this and a little charm would be hanging there in the center and the view would go up from it oh wow <laughs> that would be more profound looking on something with more columns so this is a three column design one two three if you had a four or even a five column design it particularly with something in it once you start going above this you would want to fill inside of this was something like leather or cloth or like cord like paracord or um but it's a very profound look when you get a a, a a greater diameter you see the pattern more gotcha 
like this one you have to spin it to really get the idea like because it's so small but yeah so there's so many places you can take this this technique is universally applicable to almost everything but going back to where to put these fire polish in case anyone's still kind of stumped by that so we just did our step up right and i'll just take a look at where your current ones are i know they're they're a little hard to see but if you can see where my my current one is here and the next one's there so my next one is going to need to be above this bead. So to the next position over. So for building my first column here, I want to do regular 10 -0. So there's those two. And then turning and coming up through this one. This next one's going to be a fire polish, and then I need a 10 bead. The first one you pick up is going to sit above the bead you're exiting, and then the second one you pick up is going to go above the bead you're going into. So if you're worried about what order to pick them up in, that's one way to remember it. So see, this bead's here. Next one's coming up here. I'll finish this row. I'll step up from here, and my next one is going to need to be the second bead I pick up, right? Let's, let's get there. Here we go, finishing the row. down through here here's my step up right here going through those two sorry I keep going a little bit off of camera there it's so teeny <laughs> I'm working on a really tiny space it's just, it's about half the size of my hand Wow. <laughs> but it's the, only way, it's the only way we can see you because these are so tiny. Um, okay, so here's my new row. I'm starting a new row. We did our step up right there. New row coming along. Regular beads for now because there's no natural position for the fire polish yet. And now my turn into the next bead is going to be going through a fire polish right there. It's coming up through there. And I know that I want the bead on top of it to be a tenno, right? So sliding that down. See, that's going to be a tenno, but the bead next to it, I want that to be a fire polish. It's the next position over from where my former row had one. And so here's how that looks. So you see, you're going like going up a set of stairs. Like each one is a stair, and you're just going up the next step. Finishing the row here regular beads for that last one here. Oop. Helping those sit side by side. Stepping up. So that's pretty good. And they're just going along. And look, we've already made almost an inch in just that time. So any questions about um, spiraling? Should I keep going? I know I'm going. I'm going over a lot, so just let me know. I, know. I, had, I had planned on an hour and a half today, anyway. You did? So okay, cool. Whatever. Yeah, you welcome to a little bit more, and then maybe we could just talk through the earrings a little bit to make sure folks can get the adjustments there. Perfect. Um, yeah. For the, for the peyote. Yeah, and whenever when everyone starts working on it, if you have questions, just um, tag me when you post or find me on the instas and stuff and I'll, I'll try to answer i know it's this is an advanced technique it's getting getting up there and but also if you just want to try regular herringbone first and then try adding the spiral to that can also give you uh, an idea of the structure and then it'll, sometimes it'll click from there but there's my regular beads coming up to the next one here and just taking a look so I see this is where I le left my last uh, fire polish. The next step up is going to be here. So getting my fire polish, getting a tenno bead. And then that super satisfying moment of watching it all pop into place. Just step and then the step. 
and it just keeps going up. So that's the last of that row. Finish there. Throw another row on. So my hope is that seeing this and then also seeing the visual in the handout, the 2D visual, might also give an aha moment for the craziness that's going on here. So we see this is our, we need to go a little slower here. So this is our last fire polish. It also is um, the meat I'm exiting from. And I know that the next position from it needs to be the, the next one. So I'm going to put a tenno, which is the first one I pick up. A tenno is going to go on top of it. And then we'll do another teeny fire, fire polish down. And watch it sit right there. So just stepping up the next step. Through those two. And that was one full rotation, because here's the first one we had in the in the design. That's the first one. And here's this one. So the next one, this is actually a good thing to point out. So I just got to a point where I've gone all the way around once. Here's the first one we added. And remember, this is a three column design. So we have six beads going around. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six fire polish. The seventh fire polish is the first one of the you know, the uh, full rotation. So the seventh one, it tricks you because keep in mind what we just did here. We added a size 10. We added the fire polish. We went down through that bead and then we did our step up and it's time for another fire polish. And it just it sneaks up on you. That's the one that gets me every time because it's the seventh one and it's placed immediately after having added one. We don't do any like regular 10 stitches first. So that's the one to watch for. And it's the one that you do after a full rotation. So your seventh add. It's literally picking them up back to back like that. So that can throw you off the order in which you're picking them up. It's different every round because it's moving a position every round. Now it's going to start going another rotation. Seven through 14 here. And if you're into like, I know a lot of people are kind of into numerology and things like that. You can stitch numbers and meaningful things to you in your stitching. Birthdays and stuff like that, just based on your counts, where you change your colors, all kinds of things cool. like that, how many columns you choose. So cool. you can you know, give it all kinds of like little mystic properties if, if you, you know, if you want yeah. to. <laughs> oh, wow. But yeah, so there's a full rotation of spiral, and then you would just keep going. You'd keep going for a long time. So how long did this take me? Um, it took me a while, but I do it a lot. Um, I think in total, hands-on time was probably maybe two and a half hours. For the for the rope. For this, yeah. But I get I get up to a speed where I can make a row in about thirty seconds. So I'm just going. You know how like knitters and crocheters, you get, you get fast, right? And you get fast pretty quick. It's when your hands start to get used to what you're doing and it's second nature to you. And you can, you can look up while you're doing it a little bit and still, still be okay. Right. That's what I found. Like touch with, typing. Right, with the peyote too, because there's a pattern to it, I didn't have to think about it. I didn't, I stopped looking at the PDF pretty quickly because I knew intuitively which bead was coming next. It was actually easier to follow mm -hmm. a line of it rather than the PDF. So it's like PDF kind of was nice to get me going. And then I was like, oh, now and now I feel really clear in it. It was really so it was, it was nice to have that support to get going. And then I was like, oh, this is easy. This is very relaxing. And I was able to chat with like my dad while we were while I was peyote stitching. So it was oh, wow. like, yeah. Hey, that's nice to hear. That's really good. So yeah, you you found that moment where you're like, yeah, I don't need the pattern. Yeah. That's really cool. It's a huge compliment to you. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Can we show folks a little close up of kind of how we finished it? Because we included a fair amount of findings for finishing mm -hmm. the necklace. And I wanted to make oh, sure. Oh, yeah. You mean the, the chain part? Yeah. 
Yeah, so the kits have chain in it. It's six by four millimeter cable chain. It's some really nice quality, like US made chain. Um, yeah. And we also included some like eye pins so that you could add beads into the chain to extend your necklace a bit with some extra sparkle. Yeah, and then that beautiful hook and vine clasp. So there's there's one of these beadies in there that you can finish it with. There's a whole strand of the rondelles. Let me get those out. And those rondelles, those are like, they have some serious like glow to them. They're, I thought I there was know. something to go with these fancy seed beads. So I threw, we put the rondelles in to really finish that strand nicely. And, and got to have a couple of your pumpkin beads there too. Yep. And I've got those here too. These are gorgeous. These are amazing. So you get those and you'll have a lot of extras of these because I only use six of them on my chain, but you have extra chain, extra pins. I think you get 12 of these, right? Yeah, you get 12 eye and, pins. And then you get two head pins, which I didn't actually use. So you have some places you can take this. Like if you wanted to, you could put an additional bead here like a charm or, you know, like a little tiny, a tiny uh, gemstone with the bird, or you could drop it down one and then have, lots of things, right? Because there's yeah, extra stuff. And we put the headpins in in case Danielle wanted to do a, a little dangle at the end of the chain oh. or around the glass that you have the possibility. Oh, that's true. I should have done that because you could put one at the end of this beautiful vine here. Yeah. A little dangle there. Because right? I figured we'd have, we'd have some extra little rondelles to do that. Yeah. And then also I wanted to point out that, so I only used, um, a few, I didn't use very many of these eye pins. So there's 12 in there, but these are so, um, they're not very tall. So I actually, because I was using simple loops, I would, let me grab one, one that's not on the thing. So I would slide this on. And are these my round nose? Yeah, these are my round nose. So, so getting that one on there, fold it over. And I want to show how you have two, you can make two with one pin. So I cut about a quarter inch right there and then use this one to make your other one. Oh, so like, smart. yeah, so you, there's no waste. You'll have lots of extra that you can use for other stuff. So just going to fold that up. It wasn't my greatest simple loop, but you get the idea. Oh, that's so smart. And so this one is just enough to make your next one. So create your eye. There's one. I'll bring that on. These are so easy to bend, but they're strong. Yeah. I know I, these got to be the I TC. Really, right? I'm starting to really like these tear cast headpins. I wish they had more plating options. Me too. And the thing is, this is silver, the nickel. They don't have a silver matching pin. Mm -mm. You notice that? I'm like, come on, guys. I know. I, 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 mean. I know. <laughs> we and go the on. Copper ones are great. So I, I, I grab the copper ones. They're a bright copper. They're not an antique copper, but they should start to antique over time. They will. Yeah. Like it's going to, it'll all blend together. Like, so these caps were ones that I think I literally bought back in 2020 and they have started to get darker. The ones that you sent me were lighter. That's interesting. Um, it's also possible they, yeah, they've so, changed some of their plating processes over time. So there is possible. So the ones you sent me are here. Oh, wow. And the ones that I had in my stash are here. So they do over time, they get just a little bit darker, but I mean, these are like, they're going on because they were probably made in 2019 or even mm -hmm. yeah. when they first came out. Yeah. I store them in bags. Like I store them in the, the plastic that they came in, but it's still, but it doesn't detract from the design in any way. I think it. Yeah. I find the silver ones also, you can, you need to polish up every so often if you like, if you want them to stay a little bright, to stay bright. Exactly. Yeah. It's nice because it's already antique. So it doesn't matter if it continues to antique. Um, so true. And I personally love the look of it, regardless of like where its stages are. I actually also really love the little bit of green you get in copper that comes mm -hmm. out after a while. Mm -hmm. I find that beautiful and it doesn't irritate my skin when I wear copper. So I, I just always wear it. Yeah. It's well, nice. This is such a treat. Um, 
I guess the last thing we should just touch on the earrings just before we wrap up. Earrings. Yeah. We um, talked, we touched them at the beginning, but just to make sure folks feel clear on that last piece of the kit. Yeah. And just in case anyone uh, wasn't in our earlier class, I actually put a link to it in the PDF. So a link to the video and then your video description, you have the old PDF. Mm -hmm. you have, so that yeah, one has have... like a, and, and it's <laughs> a much like... harder, like, like you mentioned, there's a pattern for the, yeah. the class that we did. It had a pattern. There's no pattern here. It's all just solid color. You just make a square that is, um, and I actually took a picture of the square before it was tubed to show it. And that shows how exactly how it looked. And it's a 14 uh, beads strung. And then your each peyote row has seven beads. And then it's um, 14 rows. Nice. And Daniel has all and here. <laughs> That's all in the PDF, the new it PDF, is, yes. and then the original walkthrough to do those. You can kind of take that as a separate project. Mm -hmm. Check out the class we did on the lantern uh, necklace, the lantern necklace class. And there's a PDF with even more how-to for that technique that you can check out. It's just this is a little simpler because we're only using one C bead color. You don't have to worry about following A A B B C C yeah. for it. No so, worry about patterns, and unless you have more seed beads and you want to do a pattern, you totally, yeah, <laughs> you totally could. Yeah, but I love like I love how you had the idea to include the extra findings because like this by itself would have been a kit. Like if I was making a kit, this would have been all, the whole kit, right? But then you're like, hey, have extra findings and someone can make earrings. And that's really thoughtful because they have everything matching, right? Yeah, I love, I think, I mean, I love the idea of jewelry sets. I think they're like really nice gifts. They're really lovely to, you can hopefully sell them together. Um, it was very fun picking out the charms. So this one, you get the hummingbird and the leaf charms. And then I put a photo to each of the charms in the listings just now. And then on the black plate kit, you get like the silver pumpkins and the bats. So you have one option that can be more fall. Oh, there's the pumpkins. So if you don't want the bats, you have like a pumpkin, the silver pumpkins as a little bit less Halloween feel to them. That was like kind of the whole thinking behind this kit. And I, of course I welcome all, this is like our first like all inclusive kit. So all feedback is welcome on it. Um, but we definitely tried to, we worked hard to make sure all the findings were included for you with the eye pins and the head pins, the jump rings, the chain, Ni niobium ear wires. So you could like have the nicest hypoallergenic ear wires you can get. So like, we really tried to think through all the pieces. So it becomes a kit that you really enjoy making and then eventually wearing. Yeah, absolutely. And the, having the findings that match, that's bonus. <laughs> Yeah. Very, very cool. And awesome. these are the, um, these are, you said they're, these are the, the neobium, neobium ear wires. The... Yeah. So they're, those are, I, I grabbed them in all their plating. So those will very soon be available in the shop. Oh, okay. Lots of requests for, for nice quality ear wires. So I grabbed some of the niobium and some of the sterling ear wires. So those will be available in the shop very soon uh, because we all need a nice quality ear wire. I think it's so hard to find ones that you can really trust. I, I like don't like the ones in my stash because I don't really know the metal contents of them. But like I know the ones from Tearcast have been like tested, and the fact that they're niobium means like there's almost there's like they're meant to be. No one's gonna react to them, so right. it's kind of awesome. Um, the last thing I feel like I should mention before we sign off is that a week from today is our next kit class. We actually have some back to back. Danielle, we did some today's kit and then sarah lovecraft is leading next week's kit and launch so we I already love the design isn't it cool so if folks haven't seen it yet here's we did an entire jewelry set with three stone did picture jasper mm. tiger eye and genuine turquoise with suede and beautiful tr cast components so that's another all-inclusive kit where you get like the jump, you get literally everything you need, the toggles. You just need to bring some wire uh, to finish it off. So that one's on the app with the interest list started. So just go to the app and click, you can search Sarah and then click add to wait list there. And what that'll do is it adds it to your wait list page. So then when we release the kit next week, you'll be first in line. So far that doesn't have a huge wait list yet. So and we're trying to make a bunch of those so that everyone can get a kit next week. But if you really want to make sure you get one, go ahead and head to the app and add it to yourself the waitlist because it's going to be a great uh, continuation of, I don't know, this is this is feeling really nice because I really like we're finding really specific projects that are that mm -hmm. feel pretty doable. And 
even one like today is adaptable also. So if you don't want to try the herringbone yet, you can make a version using the sea bees in the lantern for the necklace as well. Like there's no reason um, you can't adapt this kit to work for you. And no matter what, I know you're going to end up with something beautiful and I want to see it. So please share it so we can ooh and ah all together. It's not like a plan, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> a plan to me. I could have snagged one of those Sarah kits. They're I love so this. Cool. I'm so excited. Really good. It's tiger's eye, right? And yeah, lots of tiger eye. Picture Jasper for the pendant. Oh, okay. And then those turquoise chips. What is the flower on the bracelet? It looks Ooh. like a flower. Like... Here, let me, yeah. So, yeah, we've really put a lot of things into this one. It's, oh my God, here we go. It is, the flower on the bracelet is a Czech focal. Oh, it's like okay. A, it's a Czech focal. Um, and then lots and components of like all of our Sarah and I's favorite rings of the, actually it's the same rings you used in class on Wednesday. It's the flora rings. The flora yeah, rings. I love I love this. Those are we gorgeous. used all three sizes and the toggles and like we just went all out with the with that line of items from them and put them all together. So that'll be a really cool kit launch that features three gemstones, which I think is a first for our kits. So for sure, lots to look forward to. Thank you so much, Danielle, for. Your generosity and the PDFs are so such wells of knowledge. So I just feel so indebted to you. Uh, oh, thank you for leading. These I hope that they're good. I hope they help. I just hope yeah. we, we folks learn from them. That's why we're doing why we're doing this. I hope take the challenge on. See what y'all. I did. I friggin' did one of these. Lots, you did lots, stitching. Lots. I did it. I am a wire worker and I did stitching and I was so fun. Did. So I believe in everyone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It took me a second, like I had to undo my first few rows at the end. That's fine. I just did more rows and then I had I had my uh, my peyote and it's really fun. So we're gonna go ahead and sign off. Everyone have a lovely weekend. I have to go head to the office to help make sure the last elements for the October box are done so that can ship on Monday. So Yay. lots to look forward to next week with between the bead box and class with Sarah. So Stay tuned. Make sure you're on the text list to stay in the know. Make sure you have the app. And I'll see everyone very soon. Danielle, you have a fun weekend plans? Uh, I do, yeah. I just, um, well, actually, so the, the boys are going camping for Cub Scouts. Nice. So I have, like, beat all day Saturday, basically. Wow. <laughs> I know. I'm trying not to get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'll well, get up. I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to bead. I'm going to eat whatever, like, weird food I want that no one else would like. And then... <laughs> Well, I hope you have the most beautiful Danielle day ever. Danielle day. <laughs> We're cheering you on. Thank you. All righty. Have, enjoy your weekend and have, enjoy your weekend, everyone. We'll see you very soon. Bye -bye. All right. Bye, guys.